Okay, let's take a look at the Dark Ages Inquisitor character sheet. First, you have all the familiar self-explanatory stuff like the name of the character, the name of the player, and the name of the chronicle. Well, just like with every other White Wolf game. The character's name you come up with yourself, the player's name is your name if you're one of the players, and the name of the chronicle is something the GM determines. You know, some GMs don't like to name the, uh, their chronicles as the chronicle is going on, but you know, it's kind of like if you leave it vague enough that it doesn't spoil anything or give hints to one direction or another, you know, it's kind of like knowing the name of the movie you're watching. You know, I personally use it mostly for filing, you know, so that I know when I find old character sheets that, oh, it was from this and this game, you know, that sort of thing. Next we go into nature, demeanor, and impulse. Now nature and demeanor are again familiar stuff from other White Wolf games, and those are mostly role-playing elements. Nature means basically your character's innermost being, kind of who he is under these kind of hard shell of a person, you know, and uh, demeanor is how he behaves and lets others see him. You know, some they, they might not always be the same, and in all, most cases they aren't the same. Somebody who's very, like, uh, uh, willful and very confident might be uh, somebody who's very, uh, not very confident inside, you know, underneath all that, you know, uh, boasting and that sort of thing. Sometimes, you know, you might compensate for something, and therefore you're demeanor is different than your nature, or something like that, if you have something to hide, if you just aren't open with the, the way you are, and with a lot of people, you know, if, if you have like something deep inside you that you don't want to portray to the world and that sort of thing, uh, nature and demeanor tend to be different most of the time, and those are basically role-playing uh, stuff that for you to remember, and uh, mostly like notes on how to role-play your character's personality and that sort of thing, and uh, you know, there are mechanics to reward reward you for good role-playing when you role-play uh, scenes according to your character's nature and demeanor. Most of the time the demeanor, but you know, when you know, more private character moments kind of uh, creep up, you know, then more of the nature stuff, but you know, there's no like, <laughs> there's no that kind of structure tightness to it. So yeah, those are mainly the role-playing stuff. And the impulse is something that's new. That's something that only inquisitors have. And impulses are always reflections of the character character's nature, his innermost being. Uh, the impulse is the extreme version of that nature. Where, uh, uh, there's like a list in the book of, uh, of natures and with which nature comes which impulse. For example, if your character's nature is to be a judge, his impulse is to be a sadist. If, uh, if, if there's there's all kinds of examples like this, and of course, because you can come up with natures and demeanors yourself, you should come up with impulses to fit those nature that nature uh, with the game master. And impulse is always the extreme end of the nature when basically uh, somebody goes too far. What is he behaving like? Uh, there are there is a mechanic that comes with the impulse, uh, how that works in kind of game sense. But I will return to that later when it becomes more uh, uh, more topical later on. Next you have order, chapter, and concept. Now concept is again something familiar that all the character sheets have. You know, what's your character's basic concept? You know, if you boil your character down and in a nutshell, who is your character? What is he all about? And all that sort of stuff. That's basically what you write down on your concept. It's nothing mechanical. Now orders, orders are like the clans in Vampire or the tribes in Werewolf, but I really should reframe that it's much more of the auspice like in Werewolf. Uh, these orders are, you know, they are very distinct, but they are more about what your duty is in the uh, in the Inquisition, in the group that you're in, uh, because all of these orders uh, very much like uh, uh, emphasize on a single thing, and they are, uh, you know, uh, built for a task. The orders are the poor knights of the Passion of the Cross of Acre, or just the Knights of Acre, uh, the Red Order, the Sisters of St. John, the House of Murnau, and the Oculidae.
And now the uh, Knights of Acre are the knights. They are the uh, fighters. They are the uh, battlers. They are the ones who grab the sword and take the fight to the enemy. And uh, the Red Order are these monks and nuns who uh, who are these scribes. Who are these uh, who have these vast knowledge of of all the uh, supernatural and all the uh, different things in the world. They are the schoolers and the uh, investigators mostly. Uh, the Sisters of St. John are all nuns. Uh, they are the healers, to put it bluntly, uh, but they have all sorts of other uh, things about them. They have um, they have like these visions that they can see about the future and all these little nifty things. The House of Murnau is uh, a household that has been recruited into the uh, Shadow Inquisition uh, because they have this a uh, peculiar uh, gift in their bloodline, and that is that they can literally smell out evildoers. Uh, when they are in the proximity of a vampire, a werewolf, or even a ghoul or something, they can smell this foul stench of death and the, this uh, this just revolting stench. You know, they they sometimes have to like hold a handkerchief on in, in the front of their face because they are so revolted by what they smell. But those are great, you know, uh, uh, dogs for the uh, Shadow Inquisition to get a scent of the enemy and that sort of thing. So even if vampires and werewolves can masquerade as humans and all that, you know, the, the House of Murnau can sniff you out, well, quite literally. And the Oculidae are the rogues. They are the infiltrators. They, uh, they extract information and they uh, do reconnaissance. They are... Uh, uh, they, they don't have like this... Uh, they don't carry mantles or, or like... Uh, precise clothing or anything they t they uh, they they want to blend in and they don't want anyone to know that they are members of the shadow inquisition or that such a thing as the shadow inquisition even exists and then there's the chapter, and chapter pretty much just means where your character is from, because the orders are really spread out all across Europe and the and the world. There are different chapters all around the world in different countries, and multiple in the same country and all that. So it's basically just where your character is from, which country and which kind of chapter in that country, and you know that way you know there can be uh, stuff about your character's past to be knit into other uh, inquisitors and stuff like that and and you can you know there's a list of the different chapter houses in in um, in the uh, book but you can always come up with them yourself with the game master there's no real reason why you couldn't be from the google schreiber chapter from germany or something like that you know just have fun with it it's not that important uh, except that it's important about your character's past but it doesn't hold uh, any mechanical restrictions on you next we go into attributes and abilities and at Attributes and abilities are just like with all the other White Wolf games, or at least all the other White Wolf Dark Ages games. Because again, in abilities, instead of drive, there is of course ride, because it is the Dark Ages. Instead of firearms, there's archery, and because academics is something a lot, a lot more rare in the Dark Ages setting, you know, something like hearth wisdom is a lot more, you know, important in there if you want to make somebody who is smart, who but who has an had any academic background and that sort of thing. There is this peculiar thing that it, the game requires all players to spend one point in linguistics so their characters know Latin and one point in theology because of their field of work, of course. But, you know, I'm not a big fan of, you know, forcing the players to spend points on that. I would say either, you know, give, give them for free or don't force them to use it like that. Because, you know, werewolves and vampires get told about all this, uh, you know, supernatural stuff, and they don't have to start the game with one dot in a cult for knowing supernatural secrets about the world and that sort of thing. So I just think, you know, give it for free or just don't force anybody to take that. And the way that attributes and abilities work is the same as with every other White Wolf game. Every ability and attribute is from one to five, and when you roll something, you combine a attribute and ability that, you know, reflect the what you're attempting. If you try to woo someone of the higher classes with your etiquette and behavior, you would make a role of etiquette from abilities combined with uh, charisma from attributes and combine those two. And the number you get from combining those two is the number of dice you're rolling and the amount of uh, successful dice 
dice that g get the equal or higher uh, number that as the difficulty for the roll uh, you know determines uh, whether you succeeded or not Next we go into advantages, and in advantages we first have backgrounds, and backgrounds work in the exact same way as they do in all White Wolf games. Uh, it's just that there's a couple of new ones, but they are basically the same as all the others, uh, but with, you know, inquisitor names for them. You know, they have holy relics, just as werewolves have fetishes, they have the flock of common people helping them, just like werewolves or vampires have, you know, their kinfolk or ghouls and retainers and whatnot. So it's basically familiar stuff there. And uh, then we have virtues, and virtues again work in the exact same way as they do in Vampire, where you have self-control, conscience, and courage. And, you know, those work in the exact same way when you are in a situation where you need to roll uh, for self-control, for conscience, for courage, you know, you make the roll based on those, or, you know, they can just be there as these kind of direction pointers of, you know, where does your character stand. It's it's, it's fairly rare to actually roll those things in the end. And then we go into superior virtues, and this is something new with Inquisitor that no other game has. Superior virtues are basically what allow the Inquisitors to stand up against these uh, uh, terrors of the night, these uh, uh, unnatural forces of Satan. And, you know, there's wisdom, faith, and zeal. And these are all, all the superior virtues are like a uh, super, supernatural superior version of a basic virtue, like how wisdom is the superior virtue of self-control, and faith is a superior virtue of conscience, and zeal is a superior virtue of courage. And uh, those are always rolled together. You roll your, if you if you are made to roll your zeal, for example, you roll it uh, with your courage dice and your zeal dice uh, all together. In the beginning of the game, you start with only one dot in a single superior virtue that is um determined by which order you are in. Uh, and and the, the way they work basically is that wisdom is an ability to uh, resist these kind of earthly needs, these kind of... Um, basically it, uh, it allows you to resist callousness. And callousness is something to do with the impulse that I mentioned earlier, and it's something I will return to later on when it becomes more topical again. Uh, faith is something that where you can resist mind control. If a, uh, if a vampire tries to use presence or dominate skills on you with faith, you can resist that and realize that that is what is being done to you, and therefore easily, if a vampire tries to, you know, just mind control you in a subtle way, he's just given himself out. He, he now has let you know that he is a vampire. So, you know, that's a great ability. And zeal is the uh, uh, supernatural courage, basically. You know, vampires can show you their fangs and give you, like, this face of dread that makes you run scared. And werewolves, if they turn into their krinos form of this nine-foot-tall, beastly, horrible creature, uh, that sends normal mortals running for their life. But when you have zeal, you have the guts to face those monsters and not be affected by fear. And uh, when you know how to beat a vampire and how to beat a werewolf, if you're wielding silver weapons and you're not affected by the fear of uh, seeing a werewolf, you know, you have a fighting chance. But that's something I really like about uh, Inquisitor. The Inquisitors are not as powerful, not nearly as powerful as the beasts they're hunting. So there needs to be a lot of planning, a lot of uh, relying on these superior virtues and re relying on one's investigative abilities and uh, one's intelligence and uh, one's, you know, reconnaissance and all these different factors. Also, every Inquisitor starts the game with one horizon, and horizons are qualities for the character that come from the superior virtues. Based on what your superior virtue is and which uh, virtue is highest on your character, you get to choose from that category, from the book, uh, these qualities called horizons. And these qualities are nothing really that special. They aren't really like, or like superpowers or anything. They are simply just, you know, qualities for your character, such as your character needs less sleep, or your character ha has a completely clean conscience, or, or something like that. These kind of qualities.
Next we go into blessings and curses and holy art. Now blessings and curses don't only mean merits and flaws like it does with every other White Wolf game. Uh, with blessings and curses in Inquisitor it means something more. When you pick your order for your character there's this peculiar choice they give you either to take the orders blessing and curse or its benefit and drawback. Meaning basically that blessings and curses are the supernatural route and benefits and drawbacks are the more uh, earthly route. You know, blessings mean endowments and endowments are superpowers basically for the inquisitors though not very powerful compared to the other white wolf uh, uh, creatures you get to play as and curses are supernatural curses very much like supernatural flaws in uh, in in every other white wolf game though they are of course uh, uh, based on the order that you're in you don't get to choose those and this benefit and drawback basically means stuff like benefit might be that you're very rich so you start the game with uh, some free points in resources or or your drawback maybe that that you know you 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 have no allies because you, you don't have a network of affiliates like so, or something like that uh, something to that extent basically endowments work very much like gifts in werewolf there's no like a uh, specific endowment and then having a lot of like dots in the in the end of it but rather that there are these singular uh, different skills that you can do that are kind is supernatural and uh, based on your order you get these different things whether it's something that helps you in combat with the Knights of Acre or whether it's something that helps you heal people supernaturally with the Sisters of St. John and so on uh, and then the curses are something uh, uh, that's also tied to the orders say the Red Order suffer from stigmata and uh, the Sisters of St. John suffer from night terrors and uh, visions of horrible things of burning babies and whatnot, and uh, the holy art is this sort of discipline-like, uh, very powerful superpower. But it just so happens that only the Red Order, only the uh, uh, um, the uh, investigators and the uh, people who go through books and who know all this information about about the enemy and about all these supernatural things only the red order has holy art and that is their order's blessing instead of having endowments they have the holy art and uh, they start the game with only one dot in uh, holy art and uh, the only way any other uh, order would know holy art is if they spent freebie points on that and even then the book emphasizes on the fact that you would really have to sell the idea to the game master of why your character knows holy art it's something that only someone who spends a majority of their time in a library in on, with their face plastered on books and that sort of stuff so uh, the holy art is basically kind of like disciplines it's the uh, type of superpowers where you can actually shoot hadokens at, at enemies and summon lightning and these sort of you know more high fantasy like uh, uh, summoning the judgment of heaven yeah! and that sort of stuff instead of these kind of gift like uh, endowments where you basically get these uh, much uh, weaker but these more kind of everyday uh, needed abilities stuff like uh, uh, high level merits are for example Next we go into piety, willpower and conviction. And piety is kind of like the roads in Vampire. It's your godliness, it's your uh, goodness, it's your uh, uh, the level of how, how good you are to the people, how, how much of the loving God is reflected on, on your actions. And the uh, score of your piety is the combined score of your self-control and conscience. The, exactly the same way as humanity is in Vampire. Now, Willpower is done exactly like it's done in every single White Wolf game. It's your your courage score is your willpower score. That's how much willpower you have. Uh, during the game, you get to spend willpower points uh, whenever you want to uh, use them to gain automatic successes on your 
roles and uh, you gain more willpower by basically role playing well. That's how you get rewarded for good role play is that if you do uh, uh, role playing according to your character's nature and demeanor in like key situations in the game and so on and so forth, uh, the game master will reward you with more, more willpower points to spend on gaining uh, automatic successes. Now, conviction is the whole key to the whole Inquisitor thing. I feel conviction is what makes Inquisitors uh, unique compared to the other uh, White Wolf creatures. Conviction is your fuel, just like blood is with vampires and gnosis is with werewolves. Uh, conviction is something that you use to fuel your superpowers. How do you gain conviction? That's basically you, w w whenever you're being zealous, whenever you're uh, d uh, doing things for the uh, Inquisition, when you're uh, basically uh, uh, putting aside your uh, personal morality and uh, your piousness in order to uh, complete a task for the betterment of the Inquisition or for the cause and that sort of thing, then you gain conviction, kind of like when you gain rage or something in Werewolf or, or you know something like that, where basically based on your actions in the game you will gain points. and. Um, the, the, the thing with conviction is that when your conviction goes higher than your piety is, then you enter into a callous state. And this is what I was referring to before. When you enter a callous state, then your character loses his ability to uh, use empathy on others. He no longer sympathizes with people the same way because he's blinded by the mission. The mission is more important than the uh, uh, loving nature of God being reflected on you. The Inquisition and the Church is more important than the people you're serving. Uh, and all these sort of things. Uh, you you become very impulsive and that's when your impulse kicks in. Instead of playing according to your character's nature, it shifts into that negative extreme of the character's impulse. If your character's nature was that judge character, when his conviction score supersedes his piety score, he will no longer be just a judge, he will be a sadist and he will be impulsive about his sadism and he will have less empathy towards uh, the um, the common folk. It's, it's all about the mission. Who cares if this person is suffering? I'm going to torture him until I gain the information I need. Uh, who cares if, if this person will die? He had a, a evil spirit inside him uh, and this sort of, uh, this sort of um, thinking takes you over. Now this is when you use wisdom, the superior virtue of wisdom. Now wisdom is uh, made mostly for um, uh, to uh, combat uh, becoming callous. So, you know, that's something that where you, uh, it's good to spend callous, uh, I mean, it's good to spend conviction points during the game so as to avoid becoming callous, but of course wisdom allows you to combat becoming that. But then again, it's good to collect conviction points because when you have 10 conviction points, you can spend that 10 uh, into buying one superior virtue dot. So that's a little mechanic thing when you're basically so zealous that you're doing all this crazy stuff to the level of be having conviction or score of 10, then you get rewarded by basically uh, you're so zealous and such a you know uh, leader of, of, the, of the cause that you're basically uh, gaining more superior virtue because of your fanaticism with that. So that's basically how it ties in with the nature and impulse and how it ties together with the superior virtue of wisdom. It's conviction uh, uh, superseding and going over your piety score and uh, thus uh, making you callous. Uh, so yeah, that's basically it. And then there's only health uh, there anymore. And health works exactly like it does with vampire and werewolf, with mage, with changeling, with wraith, with every single white wolf game. And um, uh, the, the, the Inquisitors don't have any other supernatural healing abilities other than what Sisters of St. John have as their endowments. Uh, beyond that, they heal exactly like normal people heal. If your leg gets broken and it's the Dark Ages, that's 
a horrible injury. So, you know, don't overlook some, some people like uh, Sisters of St. John. You know, they are very needed if you're planning on just running ahead and fighting against the forces of darkness. You know, you get broken bones, you get uh, hacked off limbs and such, you know, you're gonna need somebody to take care of you because you can't take care of yourself the way werewolves and vampires can. So that is the Dark Ages Inquisitor character sheet and uh, it's one of my favorite games, especially one of my favorite games to run right after Werewolf. So uh, yeah, hope you found this informative, if not at least entertaining. <laughs>